The Man Who Walked Between the Towers by Mordecai Gersty. Once there were two towers side by side. They were each a quarter of a mile high, 1,340 feet, the tallest buildings in New York City. A young man saw them rise into the sky. He was a street performer. He rode a unicycle. He juggled balls and fiery torches. But most of all, he loved to walk and dance on a rope he tied between two trees. He looked not at the tower, but at the space between them, and thought, what a wonderful place to stretch a rope, a wire on which to walk. Once the idea came to him, he knew he had to do it. If he saw three balls, he had to juggle. If he saw two towers, he had to walk. That's how he was. Hadn't he danced on a wire between the steeples of Notre Dame Cathedral above his amazed home city, Paris? Why not here? between these towers. Of course, he knew that, as in Paris, the police and the owners of the towers would never allow it. You must be crazy, they would say. You'd fall for sure. And so, Philippe, that was the young man's name, began a plan to do it secretly. The buildings are not quite finished, he thought. Maybe if I dressed as a construction worker, Early on, an August evening, he had a friend enter the South Tower. They got 440 pound reel of cable and other equipment into the elevator, took it to the unfinished top 10 floors and waited till nightfall when everyone had gone. Then they carried everything up 180 stairs to the roof. At night, on the other tower's roof, two more friends tied a thin, strong line to an arrow and shot it across to Philippe, 140 feet away. It missed and landed on a ledge 15 feet below the roof. Bad luck, thought Philippe. He crawled down the ledge over the sparkling city and got the arrow. To its line, he tied a stronger line, which his friends pulled back to their tower. To his end of the stronger line, Philippe tied the cable on which he would walk. It was five-eighths of an inch thick. His friends pulled the cable over to the tower, but it was so heavy that it slipped from Philippe's grip. The cable's middle plummeted towards the street pulling the friends on the other tower to the very edge. Philippe, just in time, secured his end. It took three hours to pull the cable up. Frantically, as the stars faded, they tightened it between the towers. It was passed on before they were ready. Philippe put on his black shirt and tights. He picked up his 28-foot balancing pole. All his life he had worked to be here, to do this. As the rising sun lit up the towers, out he stepped onto the wire. Out to the very middle he walked, as if he were walking on air itself. Many winds swirled up from between the towers and he swayed with them. He could feel the towers breathing. He was not afraid. He felt alone and happy and absolutely free. A woman from the subway might have been the first to see him. Look, someone called. A wire between the two towers. Everyone stopped and looked up. They gasped 
and stared. It was astonishing. It was terrifying and beautiful. A quarter of a mile up in the sky, someone was dancing. Police saw it too. Officers rushed to the roofs of the towers. You're under arrest, they shouted through bullhorns. Philippe turned and walked the other way. For almost an hour, back and forth, he walked, danced, ran, and knelt in a salute upon the wire. He even lay down to rest. The city and harbor spread beneath him. The sky surrounded him. Seagulls flew under and over. As long as he stayed on the wire, he was free. When he felt completely satisfied, he walked back to the roof and held out his wrists for the handcuffs. They brought him to court. The judge sentenced him to perform in the park for the children of the city. This he did happily, though during his performance, some boys playing on his wire jerked it and Philippe fell, but he caught himself. And now the towers are gone. But in memory, as if imprinted on the sky, the towers are still there. And part of that memory is the joyful morning, August 7th, 1974, when Philippe Petit walked between them in the air. <laughs>